little pickerel. Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I'm out here fishing with that scorpion frog I made quite a few videos ago. Well, it was a beautiful sunset. I didn't catch anything, but I've got this bad boy and I've got a piece of camphor in the lathe ready to go. So let's go on out and get started.
So I've gotten these guys out of that sealer soak and I've done a little bit of sanding uh, just to knock down the grain. And so I made three of these new ones because I wanted them to be slightly different. This one is going to be as close a replica as I can make it. I've already got the hook on it and the hardware in. I also in included some weights. You can see the two white spots. And just like the original, it resets really nicely. Now the other two, I've made one slightly larger than this one. And this one I haven't done much to. It's got the magnets in it and it's got a little sanding done to it. This one, it's the same size as the original, but I've gone ahead and hollowed out the face just a little bit. You can see it's just slightly scalloped out. I still have to cut in the slot to put in the rest of the hardware. Okay, so I've already drilled a hole from the hook socket up to where my tie eye is gonna be. Now I need to cut this slot with the hacksaw. So that should do it. I should be able to get a wire in here. Now we need to make some proper hardware to get that hook on there. I'm going to use the same wire I use for all my harnesses. It's a 174 pound liter wire and first I'm going to make an eye for that hook. I'm going to have, go ahead and put the hook on. And now I'm going to finish the eye over here on the twister. And there you go. Now we got to mark where that other eye is going to be. So I have to get this in here. So I'm going to go ahead and pinch this off and just give myself a little kink right there. And that should mark the exact length to make that next eye. And there's the hardware. Okay, so now I should be able to just Put this bad boy in here. You got to get that nicely shoved down in there. And then this one will fall into place right along the center line. I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes for the ballast weight. I'll clean it out. And then one on the other side. And there you go. Now it's ready for the weights. Now what I'm using for weight is this plumber's solder it's exactly an eighth of an inch in diameter and i don't need much so about a three eighths of an inch piece if i don't lose it okay that's about right i'm gonna go ahead and just shove them in there and i'll shove them down just below the surface all right now it's time for a little filler this is a uh, baking soda and I'll just go ahead and spread that in there. And now we just a few drops of this super glue. This is really thin stuff. Uh, I'll sand that back a little later. Let's get this stuff done here. Just have to be a little careful not to glue the hook in place because that'll defeat everything. All right, so now it's just a matter of sanding this mess down and getting it to look more like this one. And this one's nice and smooth and ready to rock. Well, I really like the way these frog eyes look, so I'm gonna use them again. I've still got a few of these, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill these out. The, the idea is just to, to have a good spot for these things to seat. Since the lure's round, you gotta have a flat spot. And I've cut the stem off so that it's easier to put on. I think that's gonna look really good. There you go. They're ready to rock. I just need to do the other two. So I put a single coat of UV clear on the one with the hollowed out face. The idea is to seal it and be able to take it down to the lake and see if this one wobbles like a jitterbug more easily than the original. If it does, then this will be the style I make a mold of. Alright, let's take this thing and take it down to the lake.
Okay, we're down here at the dock. Uh, it's hot and a little bit breezy, so hopefully the sound won't be too bad. My intention is to see uh, how hard it is to get the new ones to wobble. Now the old one, the original design, uh, you have got to crank it back at a pretty good steady pace to keep it wobbling. Let's see if I can get an easier wobble out of that one with the concave face. Okay, here's the original. I'm going to go ahead and toss this out just a little ways. So you can see it takes a little bit of speed in that retrieve to get this thing to wobble. Let's try that hollow face one. So I'm not sure how obvious it is on the video, but it wobbles differently. It's just as difficult to get the wobble. You gotta crank it at the same speed, but it wobbles at a higher frequency. It's a little tighter wobble. I don't think I like it as much. I think I'm gonna stick with that flat face. So let's go back to the shop. Well, I think I'm done with the experimentation. I have what I want. And that is a lure that conforms with my original concept. What I wanted out of this lure is a topwater lure that was completely weedless, that allowed it to go through the heaviest vegetation without getting hung up. And then when you pull it out to the open water, you can use it as an action lure, wobbling across the water and attracting that open water bite. As far as making a mold, I've got what I want. This is gonna be my mold plug, but it's gonna be a little more complex uh, than your typical a two-part mold because of the grooves and the fact that I need places to put additional hardware after casting. So that's gonna have to be another video. So thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting and I'll keep you posted on my scorpion frog builds, the mold, any improvements I come up with, and maybe some color schemes that aren't what I've typically been doing. So until the next video, thanks for watching and certainly subscribe if you haven't and comment and ask questions. I look forward to them. See you next time.